to In The Zone with Anthony Smith. The most entertaining, electrifying, show-stopping sports podcast your ears have ever heard. That's right. Coming to you with nothing but the best in sports and news. Maybe laced with a little bit of controversy. Today, I want to talk about what I feel is a tainted NFL Hall of Fame. I looked through a list of some names that were not in the Hall of Fame, and all I could do is shake my head. When you look at their statistics and how they compare to some of the other ones that are in the Hall of Fame and how also they compare to their contemporaries, the ones that they played with during that era, you wonder about the people on the committee making these votes. I mean, when you stop and think about it, Drew Pearson, it took them forever to finally do the right thing and get this man and this man, the original 88, the OG, and how long it took for them to finally get it right to get him in there. This man was an emotional wreck. I'm pretty sure he dealt with depression behind this. Then you look at some of the names and we're going to get to it. But I looked up the criteria for making the NFL Hall of Fame. One, minimum requirement period. A player and coach must have been retired at least five years before they can be considered. The nominations, any person can nominate players, coaches, or, con- or contributors by writing to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I might have to do that. The selection committee, a 50-person selection committee consisting of media representatives and football experts. Well, I can't say that everybody's an expert. Reviews and votes on the nominees. Voting process. The committee votes to reduce the nominees to 25 semifinalists, then 15 finalists, and eventually five candidates, who are then voted on for election into the Hall of Fame. The election requirements. A minimum positive vote of 80% is necessary for election into the Hall of Fame. The annual induction. The Hall of Fame class is inducted annually during the NFL Honors Ceremony. So there we have the groundwork laid. So there are a few players that I want to look at. And first I'm going to start with a guy who I have actually sounded the horn for before and I still don't think it is falling upon the ears of the right people. O.J. Otis O.J. Anderson. And I'm going to also look at quarterback Jim Hart. For they were part of a very competitive St. Louis Cardinals football team back in the days. So I'm going to start by giving you the stats. Otis O.J. Anderson, running back, 1980 to 1994. Teams he played for. St. Louis Cardinals, 1980 to 1986. New York Giants, 1987 to 1991. Kansas City Chiefs, 1992 to 1993. Rushing yards, 10,273. 30th all-time in NFL history. Rushing touchdowns, 81. Receptions, 376. Receiving yards, 3,062. Total touchdowns, 102. Pro Bowl appearances, two, 1980, 1982. NFL MVP, 1982. Jim Hart, 1966 to 1984. Team, St. Louis Cardinals, 1966 to 1983. Washington Redskins, 1984. Completions, 2,587th, 14th all-time in NFL history at the time of his retirement. Attempts, 5,000. 76 completion percentage 50.9 percent passing yards 
34,665, 10th all-time in NFL history at time of his retirement. Passing touchdowns, 209, interceptions, 247, pass rating, 66.6, Pro Bowl appearances, 4, 1974 to 1977. So what are the awards of O.J. Anderson? Well, NFL Most Valuable Player, 1982, two-time Pro Bowl selection, 1980-1982, first-team All-Pro, 1982, second-team All-Pro, 1980, NFL Offensive Player of the Year, 1982, UPI NFC Player of the Year, 1982, NFC Russian Champion, 1982, St. Louis Cardinals Ring of Honor, New York Giants Ring of Honor. He played in the Super Bowl. Well, he was a key member of the New York Giants Super Bowl championship team in 1987. Although he did not play in the Super Bowl due to an injury. So how does his stats match up to some of the running backs that are in the Hall of Fame? Well, his stats match up favorably if you listen to the breakdown with some of the running backs in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So here's a comparison. 10,273, 30th all-time. Franco Harris Hall of Fame, 12,120 yards. Thurman Thomas Hall of Fame, 12,074 yards. John Riggins Hall of Fame, 11,352. The rushing touchdowns. Anderson, 81. Smith Hall of Famer. Emmett Smith Hall of Famer, 164. Walter Payton Hall of Famer, 125. Jim Brown, Hall of Famer, 126. Total touchdowns. Anderson, 102. Marcus Allen, Hall of Fame, 123. Barry Sanders, Hall of Fame, 109. Gail Sayers, Hall of Fame, 104. So there, his stats are comparable to some Hall of Famers, but not quite at the same level as the all-time greats. However, his longevity, consistency, and well-rounded game, rushing, receiving, and blocking make a strong case for his consideration for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So now the question still remains, why isn't he in the Hall of Fame? I just laid out a crystal clear picture as to why I think this man should be in based on his stats. If we're looking at stats, I mean, even if you look at today's NFL game and you look at the quarterback salaries, how many of them have garnered playoff success, but yet they're still getting a big payout? So is it about championships or is it about stats? Because if it's about stats, this man should have been in long time ago like I said I did a podcast on this before but I'm doing another one right now as we speak because some things just don't make sense and this is one of them as to why Otis Anderson is not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame next up Jim Hart and we're going to look at his stats too Actually, we're going to look at how does his stats actually line up. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to pause and take a break. This might not be a long version of a podcast, but it's going to be to the point to where I believe you will get the message. And it will make your mind wonder like, hmm, why is he not? Maybe it's a situation where those who listen to this podcast can contact the people in Canton and get these aforementioned people that I'm about to mention in the hall. But it is time for me to take a break. But don't you go nowhere. Stay locked in the zone. There is more to come. Because now it's a heart problem. Be right back.
Welcome back to In The Zone on a Tuesday evening. Sometimes to be the best does not mean you have to be the longest. And today we will probably have a slimmed down version of my podcast today. But one that will be very, very informative. And I'm going to tell you right now that this podcast was actually birthed at my job this morning, talking sports with a couple of guys, and it made me just do some research right there on the spot and pull up this information. Uh, I mentioned in that first segment, Otis, O.J. Anderson, and also linked to Jim Hart because they was part of the St. Louis Football Cardinals. That right there is when you can say St. Louis Football Cardinals because they had the St. Louis football Cardinals, and they also had, and still to, they have the St. Louis baseball Cardinals, to which I still don't understand why they still refer to the New York Giants as the New York football Giants, as if we don't know that they play football, and the only other Giants is a baseball team in San Francisco. So there's definitely a distinction between the two, to where we don't need to be reminded that there is a New York football Giants. We know that. They share the home field with... Oh, do we have to say the New York football Jets at MetLife Stadium? I think not. Okay, that's my rant. I guess that's part of my emotions for looking at some of these guys who are not in the Hall of Fame, whom I think they should actually be in the Hall of Fame. Jim Hart is another one. And we're going to look at his statistics and how they are comparable to some Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Even though it might not quite be at the same level as the all-time greats. Here is a comparison. So Jim Hart, his completion, 2,587, 14th all-time at retirement. Terry Bradshaw, who's in the Hall of Fame, 2,073. Hmm. One of my favorites. Played for my favorite team. Roger Starbuck. Dallas Cowboys Hall of Fame 1,685 and and remind you there were some classic games between the Dallas Cowboys and the St. Louis Cardinals there were some games that even though you had a seat all you needed was the edge Bob Greasy Hall of Fame 1,926 completions Hart just blew some of these guys out the water with his stats, his completions, his passing yards, 34,665, 10th all-time at retirement. Joe Namath, who's in the Hall of Fame, 27,663. Bart Starr, Hall of Fame, 24,734. Sonny Jurgensen, Hall of Fame, 32,224. These are passing yards. You see what Hart did compared to these guys that are mentioned in the Hall of Fame. And you're telling me his his accomplishments are not worthy of being in the Hall of Fame? How about passing touchdowns? Hart, 209. Lynn Dawson, 239, who's a Hall of Famer. Jim Kelly, Hall of Famer, 234, although not a contemporary of Hart's. John Elway, Hall of Famer. 300 passing touchdowns, although not a contemporary of Hart's. So, Hart wasn't too far behind some of these guys like Lynn Dawson and Jim Kelly. I mean, these are how some of these stats are matching up with those who are in the hall, whether they were his contemporary or was not his contemporary. Passer rating, Hart has a 66.6 passer rating. Ken Stabler, who's a Hall of Famer, 75.3 passer rating. Dan Fouts, who can forget Dan Fouts, who's in the Hall of Fame, 80.2. Warren Moon, Hall of Famer, 84.0. Maybe the passer rating isn't up to par with some of these others, but still, it is what it is when you put everything in a nutshell and you put all of his stats into one big old bucket. To me, they sound worthy of Hall of Fame induction. So Hart's 
stats are similar to those of contemporaries like Terry Bradshaw, Roger Starback, but his career was longer. There always has to be a button there, and he accumulated more yards and touchdowns. However, in touchdowns, however, his passer rating is lower than many Hall of Famers. Hart's case for the Hall of Fame is strengthened by four Pro Bowl appearances, two NFL passer rating titles, 1968-1974, leading the Cardinals to the playoffs in 1974 and 1975. While Hart's statistics are not among the all-time leaders, his consistency, leadership, and accolades make a strong case for his consideration for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Those of you who are listening and plan on sharing this podcast, can we get these guys in the Hall of Fame? Because I'm not done there. There's another one. And I'm going to conclude with this one right here. And mind you, it doesn't mean that I'm a fan of these teams, but right is only right. Roger Craig. In his 11-year NFL career, 1983-1993, here is what Roger Craig achieved. Rushing yards, 8,189. 34th all time. Rushing touchdowns, 68. Receptions, 566. 14th all time among running backs. Receiving yards, 4,911. Total touchdowns, 73. Pro Bowl appearances, 4, 1985 to 1988. First team all pro, 1988. Second team all pro, 1985, 1987, through ni- and 1987. Comparing Craig's stats to Hall of Fame running backs. Rushing yards. Craig, 8,189. Thurman Thomas, Hall of Famer, 12,074. Franco Harris, Hall of Famer, 12,120. Marcus Allen, Hall of Famer, 12,243. Receptions. Craig, 566. Ladanian Thomason. One of my favorites, Hall of Famer, 477. Emmitt Smith, Hall of Famer, 515. Barry Sanders, Hall of Famer, 352. Total touchdowns. Craig, 73. John Riggins, Hall of Fame, 104. Jim Brown, Hall of Famer, 126. Gail Sayers, Hall of Famer, 104. Craig's versatility with over 4,900 receiving yards sets him apart from some Hall of Famers. His stats are not as high as some all-time greats, but his well-rounded game and achievements make a strong case for his consideration for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But we have to also keep in mind that Hall of Fame selection considers factors beyond statistics, including dominance, awards, and team success. Craig's achievements and contributions to his teams strengthen his case. Well, if that be the case, why isn't he in there? I think it's past time that these players that I highlighted, and there may be some more who also are deserving of being in the Hall of Fame who's not in the Hall. I may save that for another podcast. But for the time being, these who I have mentioned, I believe they are worthy of being in the Hall of Fame and they're past due to be in the Hall of Fame. It's in my opinion, I don't know who's on the selection committee, but maybe they need to do their due diligence. Yes, I'm calling them out. Yes, I hope the right people hear this podcast. Yes, I'm not backing down on anything I say. I do not apologize. I will unapologetically tell the truth, even if it offends that's just how I'm wound. But I think somebody need to reevaluate maybe who how the committee is selected. That's my opinion. Because all these years, Otis, OJ Anderson, not in the hall. But you just heard his stats. Jim Hart, not in the hall. 
Roger Craig was a key component to those dominant San Francisco 49er teams that made deep runs in the playoffs, won Super Bowls, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. There is definitely something wrong with that committee. And I think the committee needs to be reevaluated. Maybe the committee needs to be replaced. Anyway, I've done all I was going to do, said all I was going to say in this short period of time. Hope you enjoy being in the zone. Until the next time, you take care of yourself and each other. And always stay locked in the zone. This is yours truly, Anthony Smith, and I'm out. God bless.